Hey everyone, I'm your host Che Dorena. Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Jurassic Park, a movie where big monsters come back from extinction and do things just as expected. When you resurrect a herd of soulless killing machines, people are going to get wrecked. But what are some of the creepy backstories and experiments that are done in and around the movie? I've done some digging to put together a list of the top 10 scary Jurassic Park theories. Like always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and without any further ado, let's get into it. Number 10. Jurassic Park is coming. Back in the summer of 2018, several different websites published articles about new research that said cloning dinosaurs might be possible. Some research has shown that in the future, hopefully the far future, we will be able to harvest usable DNA from fossils and use it to clone dinosaurs and then we can make our own Jurassic World. Does no one watch movies? I feel like people who are working on cloning dinosaurs should team up with the people who are working on artificial intelligence just to speed up the apocalypse. Have a bunch of super smart dinos running around telling you how many Duolingo classes you missed before they rip your body apart. So I have a question for you guys. If Jurassic Park opens for real, would you go? I'm a hard yes. I don't care if they kill me. I would get to see dinos come back to life and get killed by a five story alligator. That's one of the coolest ways to go out. Number nine, the first Jurassic Park experiment. If you saw Jurassic World, you know that a main plot point of the movie was that the Jurassic World scientists had been working on some sort of super dinosaur hybrid. It was the Indominus Rex. It had so much going on, it was like a Voltron of dinosaurs. It was extremely fast, extremely durable, powerful, it could hide heat signatures, communicate with raptors, and camouflage as well as a cuttlefish. But what if it wasn't the first dinosaur hybrid from the Jurassic Park universe? The fans believe that the Spinosaurus from the third movie is in fact the original Jurassic Park hybrid dinosaur created by the head scientist Henry Wu. For one, the Spinosaurus doesn't fit a model of any known dinosaur. It seems to be a combination of a few separate dinos. Also in Jurassic World, Dr. Wu claims that this wasn't his first attempt at making a unique creation. If you're going to bioengineer a dinosaur, maybe start with something small like a scaly chihuahua, something that I can put in my purse and be an even richer Paris Hilton. Number 8. Jurassic Park is a metaphor for the Garden of Eden. If you dig into this one, everything holds up pretty strong except for the parts where they use a single leaf to cover their genitals. First we have our main characters, Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler. They represent Adam and Eve. The two of them were working in a ditch somewhere looking at some old dirty bones when they got whisked away to what looks like a perfect paradise. Then you have Dennis Nedry. It was him giving into temptation that sent the whole park to hell. So that would make John Hammond God, right? Wrong. The T-Rex is God. He's the most powerful character in the whole movie and all hell breaks loose when he breaks out of his cage and starts eating people right before they poop their pants. It's a very interesting theory and it goes way too deep for me to cover all right here. But then who is Jeff Goldblum? Well I would say he's just an oily hunk. Number 7. Where did the Spinosaurus come from? In Jurassic Park 2 Lost World, we have a bunch of people. They go back to the island to try and capture the dinos for cold hard cash. There are so many other ways to make money. Why not just make some cute pins and sell them on Etsy? The big mystery is why there is no Spinosaurus on their list of dinos to capture. I'm sure if it was there, they would have wanted to cash in. Well maybe it wasn't on the island yet. There's a chance that the main villain dino from the third movie was put on the island because of the events of the second movie. They needed a dinosaur that was so vicious it would stop poachers from coming to the island and risking their lives. It acted like a giant bouncer. Number 6. Jurassic Park meets Westworld. You might not know this, but the blockbuster hit Jurassic Park and the HBO series Westworld were both imagined by the same man, Michael Crichton. It's not that far of a stretch. They're both about fantasy parks where you see and do the impossible and everything goes horribly wrong. It would be like if the guy who started putting asbestos in houses was also the guy who told people to paint houses with lead paint. But the internet has come up with some theories that the two parks 
took place in the same universe. Mainly that Jurassic Park came first and it was such a horrible disaster that people thought robots would be a better reboot. The backbone of this theory is that the movies both take place in worlds that have advanced technology. So it could be true. I would also like to see a crossover where we have cowboy dinosaurs. Number 5. All the dinosaurs are fake. As more information is unveiled about dinosaurs, we have learned a lot more about them, like what they might have looked like. For instance, most dinosaurs might have not been scaly at all, but were covered with feathers. Like a bunch of 20 foot tall geese running around. That does sound like hell on earth. So if this is true, then why do none of the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park have feathers? If they are indeed the genetic clones, they should have the proper characteristics. Well, the real answer to this is that the discovery of dinosaurs having feathers feathers didn't happen until 1998 and Jurassic Park came out in 1993. But the fan theory is that in the movie universe they couldn't clone the dinosaurs so they created what they believed dinosaurs to look like with genetic splicing. That John Hammond fooled everyone into believing that he had the real thing. This is pretty far fetched. I mean they're not going to make a new Jurassic Park movie where all the dinosaurs have feathers. The fans would hate it. It would just like throw everything off. Number 4. Inside Job after there are three whole movies that should have taught you how to not let things get out of hand. That's because it might have been an inside job. The idea is that the already mentioned Dr. Henry Wu planned to have this whole dinosaur escape happen so that he can continue his research in somewhere that was less restrictive than the Jurassic World part. This would explain the most recent Jurassic World movie where there's that scene where they're auctioning off all the dinosaurs. Dr. Wu could have orchestrated the whole thing to continue to fund his evil prehistoric research. It would also answer the question why it was so easy for the big bad Indominus Rex to escape from Jurassic World. Like when they can't find him in his cage, why don't they just check his tracker instead of opening the door? It puts an interesting twist on the whole series because it basically rewrites Dr. Wu as villain number one. Number three. Jurassic Park is in the MCU. How do you hype up the Jurassic Park movies even more? Well throw them into the biggest movie franchise known to man. This is a pretty loose theory but I wanted to throw it in because it's fun. The supporting argument for this is so far out there. It's pretty much that there are multiple actors that cross over between the two movie universes. Chris Pratt and Vincent D'Onofrio. You're probably like yeah but they play completely different people in each movie. Yeah I know that. You know that. We all know that. But anyone who wants to believe this theory is saying that they're both twins. That they have twins in each universe. That's it. There's not a lot of meat on this bone. And I like thinking of dinosaurs in Iron Man suits. Number two, they used human DNA. You want to make the smartest killing machine ever. So you get some old DNA to recreate a thick skin sharp tooth case. And then what kind of brain do you give it? This is specifically about the Indominus Rex. It could be possible that in order for the evil Dr. Wu to perfect his ultimate monster, he needed to mix in a little bit of himself. It makes a lot of sense. We are the smartest thing on the planet until robots kill us all. So why not use the best of the best? The Indominus Rex also had opposable thumbs. It's never mentioned in the movie which animal he used to give the scaled nightmare the ability to button up a shirt, but I'm sure it wasn't raccoons. And our number one is Owen's past. We all remember that part in the original Jurassic Park movie where a little chunky boy think he can eat ho ho's all day and then walk into Alan Grant's dig site and talk trash about dinos. And then a 40 something year old man absolutely obliterates a 12 year old publicly because he has no ego. That's cinematic history. Well the theory is that that little twinkie lover at the beginning of Jurassic Park is the younger version of Owen, the protagonist in the two Jurassic World movies afterwards. People think that the kid was so rattled by being humiliated that he dedicated his life to learning about dinos. So the next time someone tried to wreck him with raptor knowledge, he would be ready. It also seems he started working out. If this theory is true, it would seem that the hidden message behind the Jurassic Park movies is that mental trauma builds character. Well that's our list. Make sure you write in the comments what your favorite movie theory is. Like always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and hit the little notification bell. Until next time, I've been Che Dorena and I hope you all binge watch Jurassic Park and find more theories. Thanks guys.